by the authority vested in me by the Senate of York University. I hereby confer on you the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa Admito ta ad gradum. Congratulations, <laughs> again, John. So, well, no, it's <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. you. So, what well, are just in the center here? Yeah. Well, Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, members of Senate, and of the Board of Governors, colleagues, parents, and friends of our students, and of course, my fellow graduates. I consider it a great honor to be awarded this degree by the institution that since 1963 has been my university home. I come from what used to be considered the most ethnically diverse part of this country, the Canadian prairies. Long before Toronto, was taking a great pride in its ethnic diversity. A mixing of different cultures was a fact of life in Manitoba. One of the reasons I've always liked York is its diversity in students and faculty. It is what a friend in the library calls a people's university, and I'm proud of that. Wherever there's cultural diversity, there must be respectfulness for others. This took a long time for Canadians to learn. It wasn't easy. We went from isolation to one another in the 19th century to assimilation of minority groups into the dominant culture in the first half of the 20th century, and then finally to acculturation. That is a culture of respect and acceptance of others in the last half of the 20th century. This last profound change took place after World War II, and it, is, and it is difficult to explain why Canada changed so much at that time. Certainly, it involved better communications of many kinds. Also, a direct experience of cultures in distant parts of the world. And above all, the insistence of minority groups that they be recognized as equal to others within the larger society and to have fair treatment. We in Canada have learned these important lessons of equality as well as any country on earth, and that is to our credit. It is something we must hold on to. This belief in fairness and equality is something that you have experienced at York, and you must be leaders to maintain that in the larger community, a community of which you are already a part as young men and women. I started university in 1945, and then after working as a high school teacher, did my graduate work in geography in the 1950s. That was an exciting time. We thought we were building a new Canada as urban and regional planning were coming into their own. As new resources were developed, as communications were improved, and as a new consumer society emerged after the austerity of the Great Depression of the 1930s and after World War II. Exciting, yes, but I want to emphasize, emphasize something very, very different. My generation, and the ones after mine, are the most profligate that have ever lived on the face of the earth in consuming resources, and the most destructive in the damage that humans have inflicted on the environment. The greatest problems in the world today are related to the continued availability of good water, adequate food, and safe energy. And of course, all these problems have been magnified by climate warming and differential population growth in the world, especially great population growth in less developed countries. Of course, I'm concerned about your welfare. 
in this world where my generation has caused great environmental problems. But I'm desperately worried and troubled about the world your children and your grandchildren will live in. We all are custodians of our environment now. and We'll have to work together to put things right. You are a large class. I fully expect some of you will be going into politics and we will be wrestling with these matters. That is to the good. Bright minds and leadership are needed. But every single one of you should be well informed on these critical themes and be ready to talk effectively to others about them. Because you will have to help lead politicians on what has to be done on these major world issues. The issues won't go away. Solutions have to be sought. Some are short term, such as cuts in consumption of energy, and are a matter of political will. But the long term solutions will be found in research and development. You, as citizens, will have to support both short and long term measures. All of us are affected, and each one of you can have a positive impact in protecting this earth of which we are a part. Let me turn to what does a university education give you? An education such as the excellent one you've just achieved at York. Above all, it has given you the capacity to think clearly and to express yourself clearly. And I hope it has given you a solid foundation of confidence that you can grow in ability and judgment and to make further changes in yourself in the future. This is just a start. Your time in university has provided you with a precious period of a few years to dream, contemplate, learn, and think rigorously. Provided a space, an interval, that allows you to see that the world you're stepping into is a rapidly changing place. That is also where a sense of excitement lies. There's a complex, exhilarating world out there with many problems, but also opportunities and possibilities. In going into this world, don't just think of the job and responsibilities you will have in the next year or two. It is important to think in terms of the next decade. The chances are that the most satisfying possibilities don't come right away. Be prepared to change jobs. Embrace new prospects that arise, perhaps requiring changes in yourself. I'm always amazed when I meet our graduates from years ago to learn about the great range of jobs they found in society. Often, it has taken time, but worthwhile opportunities are there in this diverse country. Let me end with a quotation from my mentor, friend, and colleague in geography, the late Professor George Tatham. He was appointed to York in its first year, in 1960 and was the first dean of this university, as well as master of McLaughlin College. He wrote, long after the students have forgotten what we taught, they will remember the spirit with which we taught. In this, in this spirit, I want to suggest that an important part of York's legacy to you is a culture of respectfulness for others and awareness that important things need to be accomplished in the world just to keep it safe for humans and a readiness to be, prepared, to be prepared for continuing personal change. I wish every single one of you well and I thank York for giving me the opportunity once more to be a teacher.